Hey everyone, Brian of Tiny Crypto Blog. So today, the, the thought that came to my mind was I saw some headlines and heard about some headlines. One that like 43% of small businesses, which if I got the categorizing correct, it's people or companies with 500 or less equates to being classified as a small company. 43% are unable to make their rent payments uh, last month. I think maybe it was for April, which I don't know if that is a one-time blip. I don't know if that is a ongoing thing. Like I'm curious in light of data, you know, what is it on an ongoing basis and how many small businesses have been delinquent in rent payments on their properties, not receiving them, but paying them. So a company leases warehouse space or office space, and they're unable to make the payments. There was uh, another article, pardon me here. Oh, yeah, Red Lobster. You know, people are making a big huff about Red Lobster closing 50 locations and possibly filing for bankruptcy at the end of the month, which really, the state of affairs and economic conditions aside, this isn't a total surprise. Uh, there's a channel, Company Man, I'll put in the show notes. He did a video um, a couple of weeks ago, actually. It's just the lighting here. Bear with me. You know, going the other way. There we go. He did a video a couple of weeks ago talking about Red Lobster and their financials. They just, they didn't do anything to keep their brand relevant and they didn't update it, and so it just slowly withered on the vine. So it's not a total shock. However, we can't say that the current state of affairs is something that kind of tipped it over the edge, sort of like you know the 2008 events is what tipped a lot of automobile manufacturers into making big changes as well as other companies. Um, what was another point that I had seen brought up? Yeah, the U.S. Federal Reserve is going to provide loans to the Japanese central bank in order to essentially keep them to be able to purchase U.S. Treasuries uh, to keep. So we're going to. So the Federal Reserve is going to give the Bank of Japan money to buy the bonds that they issue on behalf of the U.S. government. Think about that for a moment. And then uh, what else was there? Oh, yeah, no. James Lavish had another tweet talking about uh, 100, another trillion dollars in debt over 100 days. <clears throat> and all this gets me to thinking about there's a lot of talk whenever there's lots of downside or decreasing debt or just circumstances like this, like we're in for the next downturn. Well, I've had this feeling and I've seen this, like technically we should have been in a downturn two years ago because the, the data was turning negative and things just weren't looking good. And I remember back to uh, maybe it's 2021, possibly 2022. It could have been earlier. Don't quote me on this. And I don't remember if it was Charles Hugh Smith, who has the Of Two Minds blog. He's it's good. It's a, And he's written numerous publications, too, which kind of reflects his mindset in the blog. Uh, he's worth following because he's definitely someone who has not been captured by the uh, mainstream world of bull that were being fed. Well, someone had said how, and it might have been John Malden too. Uh, he's okay reading. It depends. You'd have to check him out if that's your thing. But what they said was, maybe it's not going to be, oh, we're going to have our massive downturn and, you know, fire and brimstone and years of pain and misery. What if it's just slow, gradual decline with dips along the way, which that seems to be what we've been having the last few years where we're in a slow decay and 
with times where certain things accelerate, like monetary devaluation, a.k.a. inflation. We get spikes in that. Uh, we get slowdowns in different sectors of business activity. We get increases in numbers or uh, more significant increases in numbers or in trend lines, say like total debt or credit card debt or automobile loan debt or student loan debt or whatever it is. Okay, this camera might, this might be its last video. <sighs> Autofocus issues. And I'm thinking that, you know, it, it was brought up in Sovereign Individual how even in the 30s when things were horrible, the automobile industry was still able to hold strong because that was a new technology and it was an industry with growing adoption and innovation and a product that people wanted. And that, you know, when certain things are having certain sectors of the economy, certain geographical locations, certain demographics, certain jobs, certain skills, certain industries. It's not all the tide rises and falls at once. It's some places are worse than others. Some places are better than others. Some things are worse. Some things are better. And with the reorganization that humanity has been going through on a longer term trend, I definitely see this as being a valid thing. Because there are some things that outside of government spending, like on healthcare, healthcare is so, it's a growing thing, but there's also a lot of extracted wealth being pumped into it via government means. So how sustainable is that? We're going to find out. And there's a lot of malaise and there's a lot of frustration. And I think ultimately we're going to sort this out. There's going to be a lot of pain. And when I look at this situation, it's a lot like the macro being like the micro. So above as is below. So below. You get the drift. Where I look at, say, circumstances within the small social unit of my immediate family at home. And I look at how we've had issues with, you know, with COVID, where all of a sudden we had to share space. And that brought tension, frustration, anger, outbursts, but it also brought, you know, the the, the human spirit, the the rising human consciousness, the the underlying characteristic of to generically call it love was stronger than all. And in acknowledging that and listening to that, the, the resolution came. And then in our household, we learned to share space. And then in other changes in our lives where we've had frustration, either collectively, individually, we adjust. And it's the same thing on a societal level where we make mistakes, we stop doing those things, we change them. And I think there's going to be a lot of things, a lot of ways we organize ourselves that we're going to be changing. We're going to be changing. Uh, people are figuring out and understanding how, what is money and how the monetary system functions. They, they're understanding that we have a world where those with wealth and those who are able to create the rules, the societal rules that we generally still agree to and abide by, uh, the people with the wealth have an outstretched amount of influence. And it creates a world that ends up, the benefits are skewed towards them and not towards the broader masses. And that's not necessarily because of some nefarious thing. It's just people 
are self-interested and look out for their own needs first. That's just part of how we're wired. And when you combine that on a societal scale with the rules that we have and the monetary system we have and systems of governance and whatnot, this, the world we have today, is the result. That's going to change. Uh, I think a lot of people are going to drop out and they're not. They're the energy that supported the ideals, the social contracts, the structure, the interactions, those are going to end because people are going to say, we're not okay with the way things are. We understand why things are the way they are. And we're done. We're done. It was like a great meme. And then we said, no, the end. And we're going to see that. And I think in the end, you know, there's probably, there's going to be, there's going to be, there's going to be pain along the way. There's going to be misallocations. People are going to lose jobs. Businesses will disappear. And all of the organizations that were set up under conditions of distortion are going to either evolve with the changing conditions, with the changing energy, in which, which is moving towards a more harmonic uh, a more harmonic vibe, to put it and use generic terms, where it's going to be more in alignment with uh, uh, getting to the Wu, Wu territory, but source energy. It's going to be more in vibe with, you know, the energy of the universe, that that great pulse, that rhythm that everything else conforms to. You know, the things that went off on the rails and veered so far away from that, it's going to come back into alignment. And businesses that were created due to all kinds of distortions like zero interest rate policy of having you bar, being able to borrow money for literally next to no interest, those businesses that needed those conditions to survive, it's just like, um, I'll, I'll put it with uh, gardening and plant life. Uh, some plants, I live in the Midwest, so a lot of the plants to adapt to the prairies had very deep roots that run 5, 10, 15 feet deep. And so if there are times of extreme drought, they're able to tap deep enough into the soil to reach water at deeper levels. If there's a brush fire that sweeps across and kills off a lot of uh, vegetation, the roots are deep enough that after the fire, they're able to regrow vegetation. And what we've had is a situation where instead of having long, maybe somewhat infrequent rains that they really soak the soil and create work or a natural rhythm, there's been distortions with money. And cheap money is like having a lot of frequent but short rainstorms. What happens is plants that are not able to survive in the conditions of the prairie because they're not adapted to them. Uh, because you have more frequent water and more frequent rains, uh, they develop their plants with shallow roots and they thrive and they grow. And we've had this distorted, like this distorted weather, in this case, distorted monetary conditions have been in play, you know, to, to in very various ways for decades now. And there's going to be a lot of realignment and a lot of adjustment and it's going to cost jobs but it's also going to create jobs because the human spirit is not going to be snuffed and people are going to be driven and incentivized to create new businesses and seek new opportunities and try and provide value to other people which is where the economic engine comes from so All this stuff, to me, the only thing I can say these days is build that financial arc if you have not started. Even if it's just a rowboat, it's better than nothing. You know, look at assets that can 
hedge as, mount, as much as possible your wealth that can't be devalued. You know, things like numismatics, things like digital assets. If you've got a much larger portfolio, uh, are there investments that can be made in businesses? Uh, are there investments that can be made by, you know, fairly, fairly secure derivatives like stock certificates or bonds, in which case, you know, the risk there is the financial conditions of the companies and who runs them. I mean, that's a whole nother basket of risk, but it's something because if you just hold it cash, if you just have it in a savings account or a bank account, you're putting yourself up for a lot of risk. You're putting yourself at risk that the only thing we're going to have, and I've been saying this for years now, good God, is that the only constant is currency devaluation, a.k.a. money printing, a.k.a. expansion of the money supply, a.k.a. inflation. And every dollar you have in your bank account is losing purchasing power. So the second you get it, it continues, it starts losing purchasing power. And you can't keep up. And what can you do? I mean, we're in a situation where the money is so corrupted that we're forced to gamble and take riskier and riskier bets to try and maintain our wealth, let alone get ahead. I mean, in this day and age, and I think this was something that was brought up maybe after 2008, talking about the situation, saying the preservation of wealth is more important is more important than increasing the wealth just because the conditions will be so hard. In which case, when I say build an arc, it's what can you do to take your wealth, whether it's in a savings account, a checking account, cash, your paycheck, and put it into things that through all this turmoil we are going through and will continue to go through for some time, how can you preserve the wealth, that stored energy of money? What can you do to preserve as much of that as possible? And that's things like there are apps out there. You've got Robinhood where you can start to accumulate shares of stock. You've got numerous apps, I mean, even PayPal too, where you can purchase, you know, a limited basket of cryptocurrencies. And like it says down below, this is not financial advice. This is just me throwing out things out there that you can look into and they're worth consideration. And then, you know, your own determination of, is this something that works for me? Is it worth the risk? Is there potential there? as something that'd be good for preservation of wealth to serve as my arc. Uh, you know, there's numerous apps out there where you can also purchase Bitcoin directly and take self custody of it in a digital wallet that you control the private keys to where just like numismatics, you by controlling that wallet, by having the private key, you are the bearer, in effect, uh, of that digital asset. And, you know, even, even if it's just a dollar a day, a dollar a week, whatever it is, start building it. You know, there, I, I go back to that old proverb, the best time to plant a tree is 15 years ago, and the second best time is today. Even if all you put is a dollar a week in, at the end of a year, that's $52 that you do not have to scrape together all at once to put into your savings. And the beauty of it is, if you put it into something decent and not speculative stuff like, uh, you know, all the meme, you know, like the game GameStop stocks or meme coins, which 
you're playing with fire there and anyone who gets their ass is burned. <sighs> I hope you learn your lesson and, you know, do better next time. Like that is not a way to get rich. That's a way to bet and gamble. But even, you know, if you're starting small, if you put into something smart that's has a high degree of safety or security to it, that's $52 you will not have to worry about again. You can focus on the next $52 or the next $104 or the next $208, whatever it is. You have to start building that arc up. You have to do something. I mean, you can buy gold too. You can buy gold in one-tenth of an ounce quantities. You can buy them, I think, in one twenty-fifth. You can buy them by the grams, which is less than $50 worth, I want to say. Silver you can buy. Oh, I think a one-ounce coin is under 25 right now. Don't quote me. I have not checked in a long, long time. You can buy. Come on, camera. There we go. You can buy half-ounce Silver coins, I think you can even buy quarter ounce silver coins, which, you know, it's five bucks worth. I mean, every little thing helps. Every little thing helps. And it's important. It's so important right now that that's something that you focus on. It has to be a priority if you don't want to minimize your pain. And whatever you can build will help you stay afloat above the storm. And the bigger... The bigger the kitty you can build, it's like the bigger the boat you have. And the rougher the seas get, the, the less hardship it's going to be enduring that storm. You know, having a rowboat in a nasty storm is definitely better than having no rowboat at all. And then having a, uh, a fishing yacht is better than having a rowboat. Having a... Uh, a freight ship is even better than having a fishing boat. Having a uh, naval battleship is even better than having a, lar uh, a freighter. The bigger you can make your arc, the easier, or I should say maybe the less hard it's going to be to endure what we're going through and what we're going to face. So, yeah, that seems to be the message these days. Uh, as far as cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin, I got an idea for a video looking at Bitcoin's price. It's like we're going in the doldrums, I tell you. So I'll see about putting something together. But for now, start doing your reading, start doing your research. That's the first step. You got to build a blueprint of your ship, of your ark before you start building it. You gotta know what you're doing. Otherwise the thing could just fall apart and be a waste of time and then that time is gone. So I'm gonna wrap it up. Thanks for listening, thanks for watching. Uh, you can follow Tiny Crypto Blog on all the social media platforms listed in the show notes. And with that, be well everyone.